when it's raining, there's not a whole lot you can do with the sun. But if you were to plan to use your car's power that it's already going to make to charge your batteries, that's the thing you can do. We're now pulling it idle. 279 watts an hour. Uh, when I live in Maine, the closest Walmart is an hour and a half away. So, while I'm driving my car, and while I'm doing these big trips up from Connecticut to Maine, I said, I want to use my car's power. After doing some research with the Orion PR Smart 121230. Now they make a bunch of different iterations, depending on whatever you might want and need. Um, this one can put out a maximum of 300 watts at 30 amps. And it goes directly from the car's um, battery safely. You're not going to burn out your alternator because this thing is smart. It can only, it will only pull as much as it can pull based on how much your car is idling. And you can set all sorts of parameters in the app, which makes it very safe so you don't blow up the battery. Different types of batteries charge differently. And this thing is very smart to uh, accommodate for a bunch of whole different parameters. Now, since I have the Goal Zero, I'm using an Anderson, but you, if you were having your own sort of battery setup, you could do whatever you want. Just give it a plug in here. And in a couple of seconds, it'll start to give me the sweet juice. But we're now pulling it idle. 279 watts an hour. And that's as much as the alternator can safely give us. Now, once you get up to highway speeds and such, it'll probably get up closer to 360. And with the uh, MPPT, it's extra efficient uh, battery transfer. If I were to put it into the um, this guy down here, I don't even know if it would if it would work. Yeah, can't even can't even pull the power in that in that port there. So if you're going to do this method, you definitely need an MPPT um, if you're doing a goal zero. Well, let's go ahead and see how I did it. It's very nice. It's, it's held me up pretty well. It's very thick plastic and it's got some very thick um, heat sink vents there, uh, fins. And it's just been really good. I've had it for a couple of months now and I've already got 2% from when we started this video. And that's been maybe 10 minutes. And I plan to put it all into the Honda Element here. It's a proof of concept and it works. I used two half, two half inch uh, bolts here and just shoved them in and tightened them down on where the, um, where the posts crank down for the battery. Then that wire goes all the way through into this hole over here. All the way through, this thing comes down. When I open this door a little bit, I can kind of flex this uh, this piece here, forwards and backwards. So I was able to snake it through here, down here. I pop this thing up, runs underneath that, <clears throat> and it's pretty pretty safe. I'm never going to snag it on my foot or anything. I taped it up so it's nice. Just runs the length of the back there. It's not really going to be touched by anything, which is good. Uh, all the way back to where it gets plugged in. This is the input. Very important to put the input in the input and the output in the output. Very important to have them screw down because this one wasn't and it was kind of starting to short. So that's a little dangerous. Make sure all these things are tightened down nicely and good. I strip off the ends and do that. Um, it would be advantageous for you and more safe if you were to um, use a bigger gauge wire. At my lows, they only had 10 gauge. So I used it. 10 gauge of the... Um, if you're doing it my way, you're going to want to go with the... Uh, Stranded wire. This is the 
stranded copper wire and not full uh, copper wire. I have some up here. And although it's a nice idea, it's impossible to splice into because it's just a freaking pure copper thing. In there you can see the strands, right? A bit upside down. But you can see those strands in there of, uh, of copper. And we've got uh, a bunch of messy uh, angel hair pasta going on over there. Um, but it is a lot more workable than this solid copper strand here which is very um, kind of impossible to penetrate with the little um, metal spike if you're gonna do it in this way there's a different way you can do it you can um, you can wrap this around and solder it but I didn't want to do that because one I don't have any solder or soldering iron or the knowledge of how to do that but I know how to do this and this is working well for me what this does is it um, chomps into both wires and makes them one see you put one wire in this side one out wire in this side and then it makes them one by uh, by the bridge here as you can see that um, that metal piece is chomped all the way through both of the wires and has made them one. Now this wire that is gonna go to the battery is now gonna go all the way back. 10 gauge is rated at 30 amps. That thing pushes 30 amps, so this should be fine. Some people like to over gauge their wire. The pre-made Anderson power poles only came with 10, 10 aug, and I didn't wanna mix, mix wires. Okay, we'll just give this a close. It'll clip uh, once, and then I'll um, I'll be able to close it the rest of the way with this thing. Just give it a give it a good old crunch. And give it a spin and give it a pull, and there she is. Got this all situated and make sure that um, otherwise you won't be able to use these you flip your Anderson connector see how see how the clips are up and down and these clips are this this way I had to push these in a little bit on one side a little bit on the other side a little bit on this side until they got all the way down otherwise if I tried to push it all down from one side it kind of smushed so um, learn from my mistake. I had to make it a couple of times. I think maybe three or four before I learned it. <laughs> You'll get variable wattage depending on how much um, your alternator can put out, which is nice. It's nice to know that it's doing it safely and it's going with what it can do. I respect, I can respect that. When you cut off your battery, this thing will also cut off in a couple of seconds there it is perfectly on and off remotely turn your car on I think it has a uh, little bit of a delay on turn on just so it doesn't drain your battery which is nice just so it doesn't like accidentally get the right voltage. It wants to see if the voltage is current. And there it goes. It'll give you as much as the alternator can sustain. It'll be variable sometimes. And another thing I plan to do is, I took off the car box here and I plan to put 100 watts on top. That way, rain or shine, I've got power if I need to. So I hope this was helpful for you and your rig. Have power on your adventures. And uh, yeah, I certainly enjoy having power on mine. So I thought I would pass along the message. Um, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have fun out there. Um, take it easy.